there's a common misconception out there that equity and equality mean the same thing and that they can be used interchangeably, especially when talking about education. But the truth is, even though they're similar, they don't mean the same thing and they shouldn't be used interchangeably. The difference between them is crucial, especially when talking about students who learn differently. And so I'm going to show you how with some of the learning tools Microsoft has developed, we can provide students with equitable access to their curriculum, which helps them to engage in their learning environment in a more positive way. It helps them to be part of that community. It helps them to personalize their learning experience and also helps them to gain an independence, which is something that we all want for students. And then speaking about assistive technology, from a global standpoint, about a billion people require some level of assistive technology. Uh, assistive tech benefits everyone, including people with permanent disabilities, like some of the ones listed in the slide here, to temporary impairments like a broken arm or even situational requirements like working hands-free. Disabilities come in many different forms, both visible and invisible. Although the ones that are invisible, don't, it doesn't mean, just because you can't see them, it doesn't mean that they're no less prevalent. And so today's segment is gonna focus on writing, which occurs um, more under these invisible learning disabilities um, in line with dyslexia or dysgraphia, but you don't have to have a learning difference to access these tools. And that's the best part about it is when things are designed in an inclusive manner, they actually serve people of all abilities. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. And um, we're going to then go into Word Desktop. So here's an example of a writing assignment, and it's actually one of my son's writing assignments when he was in seventh grade. And the assignment was to write a one page story. So the example on the left, he did complete that assignment. Although because he's both dyslexic and dysgraphic, the manual task of writing is so difficult that the more time he spends doesn't necessarily result in a better outcome. And so you can see that this is a really arduous task. It took him 50 minutes, as in five zero, and um, wasn't at all representative of what his thinking was and his intelligence level or subject matter and mastery. So when I empowered him with dictation on the right here, this example took him 12 minutes start to finish, including editing. And, you know, obviously it's, it's legible and we can read it, but you'll see that it is very rich in text and content. It's a beautiful story. And like many educators tell us, when they work with students who struggle with writing and struggle with that ability to get content from their head to print on a paper, it isn't really representative of you know, what their thoughts are. Yet an educator will often say, if I sit down and talk with them, they will paint me a beautiful picture with words. And so that's exactly what we enabled my son to do. We took a weakness and we turned it into a strength by giving him a tool. And so now he's able to, with language arts assignments, really tell beautiful stories and write very beautifully. So let's take a look at the tools that enabled my son firstly to be able to get what was in his head onto paper in a sequential legible manner. And so first we're going to take a look at dictation which is we're under the home tab. <music> 